أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين المنتجبين الهداة المهديين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرواح العالمين في مقدمه الفدا ولعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم مجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم الكتاب المبين وهو أصدق الصادقين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صدق الله العلي العظيم Dear respected brothers and sisters, dear viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the 14th dua which we recite daily in our program spiritual teachings in which we discuss the daily du'as and today we have reached the 14th day just before we start the commentary and the explanation we recite the 14th du'a Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad اللهم لا تؤاخذني فيه بالعثرات واقلني فيه من الخطايا والهفوات ولا تجعلني فيه غرضا للبلايا والآفات بعزتك يا إزا المسلمين الله سبحانه وتعالى says whoever recites this particular dua on the 14th day in the holy month of Ramadan it is as though he has fasted with the, with the prophets the, uh, the anbiya the shuhada and the salihin the prophets the martyrs and the good doers whoever recites this dua rewards will be as though he has fasted with them for every night there's a particular Salat is a particular prayer and tonight's prayer consists of 100 units of prayer For every unit after Surah Al-Fatiha 10 times Surah Al-Tawheed Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad He will be granted 10 angels to protect him from all the disasters and protect him from the enemies At the time of death he will not only face easiness he will not face difficulty and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for him the guardians of paradise to welcome him when he enters paradise and he will keep him away from the fire of hell. Tonight, alongside tonight's prayer, there is also ghusl and there is also ziyarat Aba Abdullah al Hussein. If anyone um, has the time, it is recommended that you recite. The ziyara, you perform the ghusl and two rakat salat ziyara after the ziyara. Within this dua, it's clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions when, when looking at the translation of this dua, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His mercy has sent down the prophets for our guidance so that we don't fall into the uh, traps of shaitan. The education and the, the training that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through the prophets and through the infallibles, there's no way that we can go wrong. For example, when, we, when a baby is born, he does not have the lustful desires, he does not have anything, uh, for example, he doesn't have the intellect to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one he doesn't have the aql, he doesn't have the itraq, he doesn't have the fahm to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and to understand the desires of a whole grown man that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's duty was to give us the ultimate training, the ultimate 
education, the right equipment, the right apparatus for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there and He is worthy of worship. So what did He send? He sent down 124,000 prophets where in which every prophet has, has it, uh, ha had his own mission and for every prophet there was a nation. And for us to not understand 124,000 prophets mission until the last of the prophets Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam when he completed the religion of Islam and we know as human beings when the religion of Islam is complete there is no other error we cannot add anything everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the prophets that is the final word and for us to add to Islam for us to decrease from Islam this is what is called bid'ah and this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and this is what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it was obligatory upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down <coughs> the best coaches to train us in order to be in his rightful army for us to be the right doers for us to be the salihin for us to be the muti for us to be the muttaqin now would anyone be able to imagine how we as human beings would live without the prophets would live without guidance and ultimately live without the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the holy quran when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all the puzzles all the jigsaws for the puzzles why don't we utilize ourselves why don't we um, arrange ourselves and make a timetable for when we need to pray for when we need to read the quran for when we need to work for when we need to help so everything is in order as we know that the world the world of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in order but those who want to drown themselves with the with the dis, displeasures that they perform towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for them who perform sins frequently constantly perform sins without repenting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to them for this life and for the hereafter they will be in failure <coughs> and ultimately as known they are the close friends of shaitan but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself <coughs> has said that i have not forced upon you anything you are not forced to obey me it is your choice to obey me but ideally when you choose to become a muslim when you choose to uh, follow the path of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then it the initiative of a human being the conscience of a human being tells us to follow everything under the criteria of becoming a muslim and ultimately further to become under the criteria of a true believer and upon that a true servant of Ali the true Shia for example when we want <coughs> when we want a job for example before we go for the job we have to prepare prepare our CV and for the CV to be in order we need to pre present the CV to where we want to work our workplace after the CV is given you've applied for the job applying for the job needs an interview now if the if the if the people if the managers of that company see you fit for the job they will call you for an interview when you have given your interview then they will choose to either employ you or reject you but see how everything works in stages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so beautiful with his mercy and with his blessings in the holy month of Ramadan he has not asked for anyone's CV he has not asked for anyone to apply he has not asked for anyone's interview but he has said to you come be my guest take everything that is placed on the table so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants everything for 
everyone. He wants goodness for everyone. He wants everyone. If everyone wants to be in the ship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sail towards paradise, everything that is required within that ship, everything that is required to gain a place within that ship, he needs to fulfill it. And the invitation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in this holy month of Ramadan, no other month he will invite you for this invitation. This is a special invitation for its mu'mineen, for its believers. <coughs> and for those who have rejected the sayings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have rejected the words of the Holy Quran by not reciting it one and not following the commands and not knowing the meaning of the Quran because we know that in prayer we pray every day we pray five times every day but do we know what we are saying in the Holy, uh, in our prayers do we know what we are directly saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hell has seven doors in the book Majma al Ma'arif, in the commentary of the verse from the Holy Quran, Surah Al Hijr, verse 43 to 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah rahman rahim, wa inna jahannama la mawaiduhum majma'in, laha sabatu abwabin nikulli babin minhum juz'un maqsum. And surely hell is promised place for them. It has seven gates. For every gate there shall be a separate party of them. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Angel Jibra'il to explain the seven gates, to explain the seven doors of heaven. Jibra'il said to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from one door to the second door there is a 70 year gap and from one door to the second door there is an increase of temperature by 70 degrees more. The first door, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, who is the first door for? Angel Jibreel said, the first door is for the door of the people who are the hypocrites, the munafiqeen and the disbelievers who are the kuffar. The second door is for the pagans, the mushrikeen. The third door is for the Manadians, or the known as Sabi'een. The fourth door is for the Majus, the magicians and the followers of Shaitan. The fifth door is the followers of the Jewish teachings. The sixth door is for the Christians, the Nasara. The seventh door upon Reaching the seventh door, Jibra'il went silent and he said, I cannot tell you about the seventh door. The Holy Prophet ﷺ insisted and he said, you have to tell me who the seventh door is for. Jibra'il looked at the Prophet and informed him that, O Prophet of Allah, the seventh door will be for them people from your ummah, them people from your community them people who say that they are your true followers, them people who sin continuously, frequently, but they do not ask for repentance, they do not ask for forgiveness. The Holy Prophet wasallam heard this and he was leaning against the wall and he fainted. Upon this, when he was unconscious again, he said to Jibreel, Will my people enter hell? Will my people enter hell? And cried Jibra'il upon hearing the cry of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cried also. Then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't talk to anyone for a couple of days and stayed home all throughout the days that he was feeling the sorrow. After a few days in prayer, the Holy Prophet وسلم, went to the masjid, went to the mosque, and he started praying. And after his prayers, he started crying again. His companions thought that the Holy Prophet وسلم, 
was crying for the sins that he has committed Billah. but they started crying also but then he kept on crying throughout his prayers the second day and third day the companions then realized there was something wrong and the companions went to the door of Lady Fatima Zahra alayha, and said to her salam ala alayha, that the Prophet wasallam is crying so much we can't bear it so Hazrat Zahra salam ala alayha, placed a cloak on herself and went towards the house of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. At this time, the uh, the Imam Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib wasn't present, and Lady Zahra sallallahu alaihi went to the Holy Prophet and said to her and said to the Holy Prophet, "O oh, the best of the creations, what has made you so upset? What has made you to flow your tears endlessly?" The holy daughter of the Holy Prophet وسلم, saw the state of the Holy Prophet so weak, eyes pale, the face pale, and she couldn't bear it. She started crying also. The Holy Prophet وسلم, when asked by the Lady of Light, why are you crying so much? What is the reason? The Holy Prophet ﷺ replied by saying, Why will I not cry when Jibra'il informs me about a verse from the Holy Quran and he has placed my Ummah, my community, my nation, my Qom as one of the seven doors of hell, of which consists of 70,000 70, mountains of fire. For every mountain there is 70,000 villages of fire. And for every valley and for every village, there's 70,000 gaps between themselves. And for every gap, there's 70,000 castles of fire. And for every castle, there's 70,000 houses of fire. And for every house, there's 70,000 fires. And for ev- uh, 70,000 coffins. And for every coffin, there's 70,000 different types of punishments. How can I control myself when my Ummah will go through that phase, will go through all that hardship and me stay happy? Why will I not cry? As soon as Hazrat Zahra Salamullah heard this, she also fainted. And upon her conscience, she said, Oh, the best of creation, who is this punishment for? The Holy Prophet replied by saying, It is for those who take prayers lightly and do not pray and always think about themselves and their desires. Know that this is a, know that this is the smallest of all. All of the companions who were around the Holy Prophet وسلم, that time, they started weeping and they started crying. <clears throat> One was saying that, Oh Allah, why did you create me? Oh Allah, I will face so much punishment. Why have you created me? But they said that I want to leave this world. I want to depart myself from this life. Hazrat Bilal turned to Salman and said to him, What has happened? What's going on? I hear cries and I hear weeps. Salman replied, Why upon me? Why upon me and you? that our clothes that we are wearing will turn to fire. That's how repentant they were. That's how when they saw the, the condition of the, um, uh, the, the Holy Prophet wasallam, they knew that within themselves they had committed, even if they didn't commit sins, they knew that in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what kind of situation will they be in. As Zahra alayha, said, how will they enter hell? There will be, the Holy Prophet replied by saying, there will be a light guiding them towards the fire of hell and they will reach them gates where someone will take them in from the gates without chains. Then the Lady of Light said, how will they 
people brought inside. Allah, uh, the Holy Prophet ﷺ replied by saying, men will be pulled by their beards and women will be pulled by their wigs. And they will cry all oh, the agony, all oh, the weakness that we have in our bodies. And this will repeat endlessly. This will repeat. We have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment is severe. In Allah shadidul iqab. His punishment is very severe. Our bodies are weak. Our bodies cannot take pain. If, for example, boiling water drops on our bodies, we scream and we, we cry and we go to the doctors, we go to the um, hospitals. Just one drop, just a glass of water, boiling water, if, if it drops on our bodies, this is our state. But imagine that the, the, the fire of hell is continuous. Your body is continuously facing the agony and you will, you will be screaming and screaming and the, the condition that you will be in, you will not be able to imagine it now. So what we need to do is to stay away from the whispers of shaitan because we read in the dua kumail Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is the taker he takes away all the bala he takes away all the contaminations within the body wanta ta'lamu an qalilan min bala'id dunya wa uqubatiha you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know all our weaknesses, you know all our bodies. Give us that, that sympathy. Give us the tawfiq to repent. But there are actions, there are actions that can wipe away our sins. There are actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I will forgive your sins. It is, it, is, it is stated in many narrations that if, for example, if you make a deal with someone in, in the books of fiqh, if you make a deal with some, someone and it's in a contract form, and the person itself, himself um, wants to uh, cancel the contract, if you, for example, have the urge within yourself to forgive him and cancel the contract because it's going to cost you money or for example it's going to cost you something if you forgive the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all your sins will be forgiven this is from business side of perspective uh, perspective but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that whoever performs whoever sends salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad in a group that group all the sins for that group will be forgiven their sins will fall like the leaves fall from the trees if someone for example stands for someone's janazah the funeral Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for every step they take for every step they take hundred thousand rewards will be written down for him and hundred thousand statuses will be elevated for him in Jannah in paradise these are the least of the mercies that you will receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same way that if someone recites Bismillahi walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen before he starts eating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his sins for every time you as a human being you as mankind you as a person that risk is given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you sit on the table before you start eating if you recite this all your sins will be forgiven how many times do we eat a day how many times do we drink water after the tragedy of Karbala it is narrated that whoever drinks cold water he should remember the plains of Karbala he should remember the thirsty Household of the uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they should remember Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the tragedies and the difficulties that he went through. Similarly, in this holy month of Ramadan, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Ayyuh nas whoever opens or breaks a Muslim believer's fast, he will be given the rewards of freeing a slave." 
and his sins will be forgiven. The companions then replied to uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, that what if we don't have the means, we don't have enough money, we don't have uh, enough um, wealth to support that uh, believing mu'min to open his fast, to break his fast. The Holy, the Holy Prophet وسلم, replied by saying that as small, as little as, a ha as half a date or a glass of water will suffice you and will protect you from the fire of hell. You have to take in note, you have to take into account the thawab, the rewards, the ajr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to hand out in this holy month of Ramadan. In the same way, when we, something that uh, cleans our slate is uh, the dua that we perform, the dua that we recite, we supplicate before we open our fast. It is narrated that if we say Ya Azim Ya Azim Anta Ilahi La Ilaha Illa Li Gayruk Igfir li Dhamb al Azim Annahu La Yaghfir al Dhamb al Azim Illa al Azim If we recite this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you as a human being who has sinned all your life, your sins will be forgiven and you will be like a small baby who has just entered this world. You will be a masoom basically. You will not have any sins. In other narrations, it is said that before you open your fast, if you recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya wasi'ul maghfirah, ighfir li. If you recite this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all your sins. And the most common narration that we have, that we recite, we supplicate before we open our fast is, Allahumma laka sumtu wa ala rizkika. If we recite this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also forgive our sins. Another thing that we should try to perform in this holy month of Ramadan is to repent hundred times a day because we see in narrations, in documents where the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did repent throughout his um, days in his life. There is also medical commands that Imam Ali salam gives us and one of the commands he gave to his son Imam Hassan salam by saying, Oh Hassan, do you want to uh, never see the medical uh, issues within yourself? Do you never want to go to a doctor to be diagnosed with anything? Imam Hassan salam replied by saying, Yes, oh father, let me hear. Imam salam Say, said first of all if you don't eat, eat unless you have the appetite for so we if we want to eat we have the appetite we have to have the appetite to eat we cannot just eat just for the sake of it if you are hungry then we eat this is what the uh, medical commands the medical codes to stay away from a doctor the second thing is to take your hands away from the food not filling your stomach, you are on the table, you are eating, you are eating, but you have to leave uh, some room to breathe at least, so we don't want to be full. This is the second thing. Third thing is take small bites, take small handfuls and chew your food properly. The fourth is just before you want to sleep, visit the bathroom, visit the WC. And there are other narrations stating that if someone is scared, of having the flu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, don't be scared because this is a protection of craziness. Others, if they start coughing and they feel ill, coughing also is a protection of paralyzation. So when someone, want, when someone is coughing, when someone has uh, the cold and he's coughing and he's coughing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, to, wants to protect you from paralyzing. And the swelling of the eyes there's no harm in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, wants to protect you from blindness. So these are things that we have to take in note and we can't say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing us. No, there is ajr and there is reason for everything. Other narrations say that whoever has temperature and is suffering one night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down 
the rewards of a whole year for him. A person who is suffering uh, from temperature for two nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him ajr, will write down rewards in his good book for 30 years. And whoever is suffering from temperature for three days or three nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write good deeds for him for 77 years. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to punish you in a way that he likes? No. There is a reason for everything. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon the ill. He has stated that a person who is ill, his, his breath will be classed as tasbih, as supplication, as remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His screams of agony will be uh, classed as salawat. Pains in the chest will be classed, of, classed as jihad. And whoever is in a state where he used to speak before and now he is not able to speak, for example, he is in a coma, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the time, the time span that he is not able to talk and he is not able to say anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, write good deeds for him. So if a person who is in coma for a whole year He's in, a, he's in coma for more than a year, 20 years, 30 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, write down good deeds for him. As we know that salat, prayer, fasting, everything is not wajib upon him if he is in that state. So endlessly and frequently and constantly good deeds will be written down for him. And the angels will come by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell him as soon as he is fit and healthy to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of him and he nourished him and he gave him health again and do not forget that this is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to give us the ajr to remember him with the utmost clear pure intentions by remembering what he has in store for us what he has on the table for us especially in this holy month of Ramadan and then people who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as explained their punishment explained their severe um, hereafter we end this dua we end this uh, program with the recitation of dua ibn zamana Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى بائي في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقاعدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا رحمن الراحم